All right, so we'll get make sure everyone's here before we start. All right, so we'll get make sure everyone's here before we start. Oh, okay, yeah, I want to. All right, volume is fine. I think we're good here. All right. Just waiting for everyone to get here. So. Oh, well. All right. Let's just get started then. How many people do we have? Uh, two watching. Oh, it's because probably one of them is. Okay. Oh, well. Let's start. Uh, I kind of want to wait, though. Should I wait for red? I don't know. We could do it again. If red comes back, we could do it again. Let's do that. All right, so let's start. All right, so I guess it's loading. Yeah, it's loading. <laughs> so the scalpel is the loading tool. That's nice. This is a flash-based game, so. Surgery Squad. Hello, and welcome to Surgery Squad's virtual ingrown toenail removal. I'm Dr. Jeff, and I'll be guiding you through this procedure today. An ingrown toenail happens when the edge of the toenail grows down and into the flesh of the toe. When this occurs, there is usually a moderate amount of pain, redness, and swelling around the toenail. An ingrown toenail is usually caused when extra pressure is applied to the toe due to shoes that are too tight or too loose, improperly trimmed toenails, foot or toe deformities, injuries, That's and fungal nasty. issues Look can also toenail. be contributing factors. There are some ways to treat an ingrown toenail at home to relieve some of the pain, but remember that you should never attempt to remove an ingrown toenail yourself. If you're a diabetic and have an ingrown toenail, it is recommended that you go to the doctor immediately. Now that you understand the causes of an ingrown toenail, let's put on our gloves and remove one. Nice. Our patient is ready, so let's begin by disinfecting the toe. Okay, so... The toe, right? <laughs> so, the whole foot. Let's do the whole foot. Because... I want to make sure I don't miss anything. So, all of that. I think that's good. All right. Continue. Now, we need to numb the toe with a local anesthetic. We'll have to inject the anesthetic in several locations around the toe. All right. So, directly into here. Oh, it won't let me do that. Oh, I can. <laughs> Great. Now we'll wait a few minutes for the toe to get numb. So five minutes later. All right. Now that our patient's toe is numb, place the special tourniquet around the toe. This will help reduce the amount of blood coming from the wound. Oh, Once you've done that, we can move on to removing the ingrown portion of the toenail. It's... 
There we go. First, carefully slide one blade of the nail anvil under the affected nail. Okay. We're going to go down the nail until we oh. feel a little bit of resistance. Our patient's going to feel some pressure as we cut away the ingrown nail. <laughs> oh, okay. Click. Oh! This is the microbes. Yeah. Oh. Great. Take the forceps and carefully remove the ingrown nail. Oh. Right, so yank it out. Oh. It's getting kind of messy in there. Let's clean up that blood. Oh. All right. See that small bit of pale yellow substance right there? Yes. It looks like the patient has a bit of infection in the toe. Firmly squeeze the edge of the toe oh, to get no. as much of that infection out as you can. Oh, that's just nasty. That toe is starting to look much better, but we're not done yet. Next, we're going to apply some phenyl acid to the wound. This will help ensure that the problem of ingrowth will not reoccur in this toe. Okay. When you're done inserting the acid, I'll remove the tourniquet and we'll finish up. Finish by applying some antibiotic ointment on a sterile gauze pad. Place it against the toe and wrap it in a gauze bandage. Fantastic job! Since there was some obvious infection, our patient will be sent home with a prescription for some antibiotics. We'll also need to oh. tell our patient to keep the wound dry, clean the wound regularly, and replace the bandage two to three times a day. While our patient's toenail isn't likely to regrow, his condition is likely to return if he doesn't take care of his feet. This includes wearing proper fitting shoes, properly trimming his toenails, and keeping his feet clean and dry. And that's how we remove an ingrown toenail. You did a great job today. While you're here, try your hand at one of our other surgeries here at SurgerySquad.com. Oh, you know what? Heck yeah. Since we're here, what shouldn't we do? Should we do the virtual, guy, virtual gastric bypass surgery or virtual hair transplant surgery? <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, so... I, I don't know which one. Either do... Uh, no. All right, let's do the hair transplant. Before you scrub in. All right, let's do this. Welcome to Surgery Squad's virtual hair transplant. I'm Dr. Susie, and I'll be assisting you with this surgery today. A hair transplant is an outpatient procedure that involves transplanting hair follicles from one part of the body, known as the donor site, to the balding part of the body, known as the recipient site. Although hair transplantations are typically used to treat male pattern baldness and restore eyebrows, beard, or chest hair, they can also be used to fill in scars caused by accidents or surgery. Yep. Today, we'll be using the strip harvesting method to treat our patient's male pattern baldness. Strip harvesting involves removing a small strip of scalp from the donor site under local anesthesia and transplanting the pieces or grafts of the scalp into the recipient site of the patient's head. Before the surgery, our patient was advised by his doctor to avoid using any medications that may result in a poor take of the grafts. These medications include, but are not limited to, aspirin, ibuprofen, and antacids. Alcohol use and smoking before and after the surgery can also result in poor graft survival. To prepare our patient for the procedure, we'll need to first shampoo his hair with an antibacterial agent to help prevent any infection. Hey, I think you can handle that. Oh, there we go. All right, so let's make sure we get his hair nice and good. 
So, wow, this thing is... Alright. Make sure you get the hair. Oh, I can't get the edge there. Fill everything in. The color by the, it's like coloring in the lines, sort of. Come on. Should get some in his eyes, because that's the best way to do it. Color everything in. I think that's good enough. That's good enough. All right, continue. <laughs> so now we gotta work it up and get a good lather. Aw, <laughs> some of the stuff that's in his eyes isn't gonna go away. Aw. Do I feel bad? No. So fresh and clean. Oh, Thoroughly God. rinse the patient's hair and we're ready to get started. There we go. Might as well wash out some of his eyes. I mean, we can't be too mean. Oh, come on. You take the next away step that? is to oh. define our patient's target hairline. Go ahead and outline where we want the patient's hairline to be. All right, so we want the... That looks good right there. Right? Good. That looks good to me. <laughs> Let's prepare the donor site. We'll begin by trimming the patient's hair in that area. Oh, it's not going to let me shave his whole head? Oh, that is just not right. That's good enough. Now that the patient's hair is trimmed down, we'll need to mark the area that we'll be removing. All of that. Great job! <laughs> Inject local anesthetic into the marked injection sites to reduce the amount of discomfort our patient may experience. All right, so here, here, up here. Oh, this game is pretty much hand holding all the way. I mean, it's pretty just interactive. Great, thing. he won't feel a thing. Now we'll need to remove the piece of scalp we outlined from the donor site. Use the scalpel and cut along the line to begin the process. Aww. Next, we remove the piece of scalp from the donor site. Make sure you have a good grip. Make sure you have a good So funny, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Oh. Uh. Once removed, we'll prepare the piece of scalp for grafting by dissecting the individual follicles. But before we do that, why don't you go ahead and suture the donor site? Oh, see, so it doesn't even let me do that. Okay, this game needs to be so much more interactive. Or they need to add this stuff to um, uh, Surgery Simulator. All right. Pretty much just click and click. And here. Great, let's get to some dissecting. Yay, the best part. The first part. thing that we need to do is cut the removed scalp into sections. We'll dissect this one section of skin while our medical assistants take care of the others. 
Let's remove the individual follicles from the donor material using a pair of tweezers and a sterile razor. <laughs> I was like chopping it up. Yep. Oh. Nice job. This step is repeated thousands of times to get each follicle prepared. I'll have my assistants finish up. To prepare the recipient site, you'll need to first inject a local anesthetic into the scalp. We don't want our patient to be uncomfortable. Yeah, we do. Of course we do. Now we need to make tiny incisions into the recipient site so that we can place the grafts into the scalp. Use the microblade to make the incisions in the recipient site. Oh, come on. You're not going to let me just... Ugh, fine. Wow, it seems like hair grafting would take forever. Perfect. With all of the incisions, it's getting a little messy there. Let's get that cleaned up. Oh, it lets me do that. Okay, fine, whatever. Much better. Use your tweezers to pick up and insert the hair grafts into the recipient area. Wow. Yeah, see, it's just, it's just like a point-and-click adventure game. It just said. You're a natural. Now that you've got the hang of it, we'll repeat these steps for the remainder of the recipient site. After the procedure has been completed, our patient will be prescribed antibiotics to prevent wound or graft infections. For up to a week after the procedure, the donor area may be sore and some numbness may be experienced as well. Our patient can also expect moderate swelling and redness during this time. That's just nice. Shampooing of the recipient area is typically started two days after the surgery. This is important as it prevents scabs from forming. If scabs do form and are left to bond to the hair shaft, the newly transplanted hair follicles may be lost. Oh. In about 10 days, our patient will return to have his sutures removed. During the first few days after surgery, almost all of the transplanted hairs will fall out due to shock loss. Shock loss occurs when the hairs are traumatized by their relocation. Within two to three months, the patient can expect new hair to begin to grow from the treated area and continue to thicken during the following six to nine months. And that's hair transplant surgery. Oh, yay. Why that not was try fun. your surgical skills in another surgery here yes. on SurgerySquad.com? <laughs> oh, so here we have some of these how to cook a turkey. <laughs> Cook a turkey. I have no idea how that's surgery, but <laughs> hold on one second. Oh, all right. All right. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so, <laughs> what should, should we do? Let's see. <laughs> Uh, why not? <laughs> why not? Uh, before you scrub in. Whew. Oh, well, I just won't upload Welcome this. to Surgery Squad's Virtual Breast Enhancement Surgery with Silicone Gel Implants. I'm Dr. Susie, and I'll be assisting you with this procedure today. For those with a weak stomach or have children in the room, I need to let you know that the next few steps get a bit graphic and contain nudity. Oh. This procedure may not be appropriate for work or school environment. <laughs> work or school Click the continue button when ready. I, how old are you again, Keegan? Because I don't know. I want to get in trouble. Oh. <laughs> Thirteen. Uh, 
I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All right, we're going to do the turkey one then. Hold on, I'm just going to skip Welcome to, the end. to and that's hair transplant surgery. Why not try your surgical skills in another surgery here on SurgerySquad.com? Oh, it randomizes it. Oh. oh. Okay, so we got some new ones. So we got the dental and the virtual laser tattoo removal. Uh, the site is called Surgical Squad. If you really want to do your breath, uh, all right, let's do, all right, let's do, I don't know what I want to do. Oh, how to Google. Um, okay, we can do the turkey one. All right, how to cook a turkey. I found it. Let's do the turkey. Hello, and welcome to Surgery Squad's Thanksgiving special, How to Cook a Turkey. I'm Dr. Jeff, and I'll be guiding you through this delicious procedure today. Nothing helps me relax more after a challenging day in the OR than cooking a fine meal, and I especially love doing it for family and friends at a big Thanksgiving dinner. I would the do guest music, of honor at any Thanksgiving dinner is a turkey. It would interfere with today, the talking. Today, we're going game. to show you how to prepare cook and carve your bird to help make this Thanksgiving and others to come delicious and memorable. Just like we do for a surgery, we have to make sure we have all the tools necessary for the procedure. Here's what I use. Because you know a cooking a turkey pan with handles and a rack. Surgery. Good for catching drippings as the bird bakes, aluminum foil, a stick of butter softened at room temperature, kosher salt, freshly ground black pepper, and a meat thermometer. You don't need Before them, you them cook your bird, you must make sure it is completely thawed in your refrigerator. Never leave a turkey out to thaw at room temperature, because that might cause bacteria to form. Oh, bacteria is good for you, though. Our patient, uh, subject today, is a 24-pound turkey who is nicely thawed and ready to be the big star. Can you pat the turkey dry with some paper towels as I remove the gizzards and neck from the body cavity? Sure, I could do that. Oh, there's Great a Great work. Let's wash up and get cooking. No matter what size bird you're working with, it's important to remember to keep it moist. If the bird is too dry, your guests might have to lie and tell you how delicious the turkey is when well, they good. really wish they were eating a TV dinner. Here's how I prepare a turkey to keep it moist. First, rub the softened stick of butter deeply onto the turkey skin, <laughs> which will make it nice and brown as it bakes. It sounds so dirty. <laughs> oh God, this is... <sighs> uh, oh, okay, I think I'm better now. Oh. Good. Next, sprinkle a generous amount of salt and pepper all over the bird for seasoning. To make sure we get. Oh, this is like okay. It's automatic. Good. I thought it was semi-automatic, but it's not. It's it's fully automatic. 
Oh, you can only put so much. All right, it's good enough. Great! The bird's all seasoned up, but not quite ready for the oven. Some folks traditionally fill the cavity with their stuffing mixture. I don't, mainly because it introduces some problems. First, there's a chance that bacteria can find its way into the bird. Also, if you cook your bird to the perfect temperature, the stuffing will be too dry. It's best to bake the stuffing as a separate dish. Instead of stuffing, let's put in some aromatics, such as rosemary or sage, a stick or two of cinnamon, a whole lemon, onion sliced in half, or a handful of peeled garlic cloves. As the turkey cooks, so do these guys, and they'll release all kinds of flavors that will get right into the meat. Mmm, this guy's gonna taste good! One more thing before we put it in the oven. Take a large piece of aluminum foil and form a tent over the bird. It will keep any moisture from evaporating. We'll take it off during the last 45 minutes of cooking so the bird can brown up. There we go. Ready for the oven? Okay, we've got ours preheated at 325 degrees. Generally, we'll cook a turkey at about 15 minutes per pound. Our turkey weighs 24 pounds, so multiply 15 by 24 to get 360. Then divide that by 60 to get 6 hours. All right, we'll put the turkey in the oven. Come, go. All right, let's put the game on the TV and get ready to greet our guests. Five hours later. <laughs> There's about 45 minutes left. Time to remove our foil. Mmm, smelling great. There's some nice drippings in the pan for gravy. Everything seems okay, but let's see where we are with the bird's temperature. Most turkeys come with this little pop-up device that's supposed to tell you when your bird is done. Thing is, it's not always accurate. That's where you need the meat thermometer. It's going to give you the most accurate temperature. We're looking for a temperature of 161 degrees for the white meat and about 180 degrees for the dark. In just inject. Thank you. All right, so it's 160. Not good enough. This is how you do surgery, too. So it's not quite ready yet. Let's leave the foil off so the turkey can get a nice layer of browning on it. I've got to get back to my guests. 45 minutes later. Here he is, all nice and brown and ready for carving. First, cut here in this thin layer of skin that holds the thigh to the breast. Okay. Cut all the way down to your carving surface and stop when you reach the joint. So I'm thinking after I do this, I can do a uh, heart transplant. Great. Now just take thing, your right? hand, washed of course, and press down on the thigh. Remove it when you hear the socket pop. Then just cut it off. All right. <laughs> Not how it sounds like. Put that on a separate plate to carve up later. Now let's begin carving the breast. Nice and clean. Ought to have you over to carve our Christmas turkey, too. Yeah, let's you should. Let's cut a few more slices. These guests are getting hungry. Come on. Wow, those are some delicious looking slices. Great job. Let's just go ahead and eat. See you after dinner. Our subject is, well, gone, but everyone else is recovering nicely. They'll want to rest thoroughly to let their food digest. Guys might need to loosen their belts a few notches for comfort. Your guests may also stray into the kitchen for leftovers. All right, we're normal doing the and dental crown replacement It means next. less you have to clean up. You did a great job today. Thanks for your help in the kitchen. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving, and we'll see you back in the OR working on one of our other surgeries here at SurgerySquad.com. Um, root canal surgery. Yes, let's do that. Welcome to Surgery Squad's virtual root canal procedure. Same I'm guy, the one and only voice. Dr. Jeff, yeah, okay. and I'll be helping you with this surgery today. A root canal is an endodontic dental procedure 
that's used to repair and save a decayed or infected tooth. Okay, got it. During a root canal, your dentist or endodontist will remove the pulp tissue within the tooth. Once yes. everything is removed, they'll clean out any contaminants inside the tooth and seal it to prevent any further infection. Our patient today is having a root canal performed on their lower right second premolar. A dental professional may refer to this tooth as tooth 29. Tooth 29. Okay, Before right. we begin, would you like to review some of the common myths and misconceptions surrounding root canal treatment? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Yes, no, no, no. No problem. Let's move on. In effort to make our patients as comfortable as possible, we need to inject a local anesthetic into their gum line. But first, apply a topical numbing gel to the injection site. This will help reduce any discomfort the needle may cause. Get, come on, get, just scrub it up. Next, we can inject the local anesthetic. All right. After the local Give anesthetic has taken effect, come on. the area should become numb for a few hours. I got it. Use the syringe to inject okay. the local anesthetic into the patient's gums. Just below the tooth, gums, we'll be right? performing a root canal treatment on. All right, so back there. Oh, I just don't, I, I just don't, I just... These things are the worst. Let's give our patient like a few only... minutes to relax and for their mouth to become completely numb. See, at least in Surgy Simulator, you can do whatever the heck you want. Now that the patient's mouth is numb, we can move on to isolating the tooth. Since our patient's saliva contains contaminants that we don't want getting into the tooth, isolation is a critical step during root okay. canal treatment. got it. To isolate the tooth, yep. we need to punch a small hole into the rubber dental dam and place it over the tooth. Once the rubber dam is in place, put on a tooth clamp to keep it from moving. Oh, that tooth clamp does not look comfortable Next, at all. Next, we'll need oh. to dry out the tooth as much as possible using our air water syringe. So far, so good. Now that the tooth has been isolated, we can create our access cavity in the tooth using our drill. Yeah, buddy, this is where I was coming from. All right, drill. Drill, baby, drill. Oh. 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 The next step is to clean and shape the tooth's oh. canal using a root canal file. Go ahead and give it a shot. Yeah, buddy. Oh. At this point, the dentist would measure the depth of the canal using a combination of x-rays and specialized equipment. If a dentist fails to measure properly, it could mean that the tooth would be at risk for reinfection. Oh, hold on a second. Now we need to clean the canal of the tooth using sodium hypochlorite, commonly known as bleach. He sure likes it. All right, so oh, you're injecting bleach. We'll let the bleach the sit in our patient's oh. tooth for about five minutes Why to make sure that all the bacteria oh. and tissue inside the tooth has been dissolved. Oh, it feels so uncomfortable. Great. Now use the suction to remove the bleach from the patient's tooth. Oh, all right, let's do that. Next, we'll need to fill the tooth using a rubber compound known as gutta percha. Gutta percha is often preformed as tiny, thin cones that we'll insert into the clean canal of the tooth. I've already added some sealant to the gutta percha cone. Looking good. A heated instrument is now used to remove the excess gutta percha. Okay. Pack the gutta percha into the tooth canal using a plugger. Plugger? Ugh, this, this looks After so After the much. gutta percha has been placed, it is common that additional x-rays are taken to verify that the canal has been adequately sealed off. Once the dentist verifies that the canal has been sealed, a filling or crown is placed depending on the location of the tooth. You can learn more about fillings and crowns in our virtual dental filling and virtual dental crown procedures here on SurgerySquad.com.
After a root canal, patients should expect some mild sensitivity and discomfort. This can usually be relieved using over-the-counter pain medication, such as ibuprofen or naproxen. By brushing twice a day, flossing daily, scheduling regular dental visits, and avoiding smoking, it is possible to greatly reduce the need for a root canal. Okay, good, good. good. And that's a root canal. Why not oh. check out some of our other amazing surgeries? Oh, here yeah. On okay, one more. Squ one more. Oh, okay, this one has a little more. There we go. I have to adjust this just a little. There we go. Yes. Cataract eye surgery. Hello, and welcome to Surgery Squad's Cataract Surgery. I'm Dr. Susie, and I'll be guiding you through this procedure today. A cataract is a clouding of the lens inside the eye. The lens is located behind the pupil and focuses light on the retina. A cataract causes loss of vision that can't be corrected with glasses, contact lenses, or even LASIK. Okay, that's so good So it must enough. be yep. surgically removed. Understood. We're going to remove the clouded lens and replace it with a new one called an intraocular lens, or IOL. The surgery takes about an hour and can be done on an outpatient basis. All right, that's good to know. Today, our patient is a 66-year-old woman who has noticed an increased blurriness that's nice. in her vision. I just, well want to in, I just want to vision. cut her eye open and she shove the lens right in there. And she detected cataracts and Come recommended on. her to us for surgery. Let's begin. First, we need to administer a relaxing sedative intravenously. Oh, this yeah. This will make our patient drowsy, but not put her to sleep. Oh, oh, that's mine. I want her to see her to trust. Yeah, I want her to see the horror that I'm going to put her through. Oh, I've had way too many IVs in my life. God, I hate IVs. Just prior to surgery, additional drops of anesthetic are applied. All right. We'll use a device called a speculum to hold the eye open wide during the procedure. Place the speculum for me, please. Yeah, buddy. It's... Oh. We'll begin the surgery with a small, painless initial side port incision. This is called a limbo corneal incision. It's done by making a small cut in the limbus with a crescent knife. Oh, yeah. Next, oh. we use the crescent knife to make a corneal tunnel into the interior chamber of the eye. Oh, this is, this is so uncomfortable because I'm going to have to do something similar. Oh. <laughs> a thick, transparent, viscoelastic fluid is injected to fill the space between the cataract and the delicate underside of the clear cornea in front of it. This is done to keep the cornea from collapsing during the procedure. Help me out and inject the fluid into our patient's eye. Yeah, I will. Let's inject it. Oh. <laughs> now so we need to make a 2.85 millimeter wide incision at the edge of the cornea for the cataract removal. This is done with an extremely thin diamond scalpel. All right. Oh, this is so wrong. A bent needle is inserted into the incision and used to poke a hole into the clear sac that holds the lens with the cataract. All right, buddy. Let's do that. Oh. The needle is dragged to cut a line in the sac. Oh. With the incision made, we'll insert the forceps to grab the torn sac and tear a circle out of it. Oh, that is just so yummy. Oh. Now you will need to inject fluid into the incision to separate the lens from the capsule. All right, let's do this. This causes the lens capsule to float so that it can be rotated during the next step. We'll okay. now perform phaco emulsification, or phaco. This is done by using ultrasound to break up the affected lens so it can be removed from the eye. To do this, we pulse and drag the device to cut across the cataract oh, lens. Oh, it's letting me do it. Oh. 
<laughs> we repeat the fako from the other direction to create four pieces. Oh, this... The fako is then used to suction out the pieces of the old limb. I'll need you to remove the last remaining soft cataract material out of the eye, leaving okay. behind the clear, empty lens capsule. Oh. When you're done, inject more viscoelastic fluid into the lens capsule to keep it from collapsing. I love how they show the air bubbles in there. I'm pretty sure that's not good. The flexible intraocular lens is rolled up for insertion by the assistant and placed in a soft tube. The IOL is now injected through a tube into the vacant lens capsule. All right, let's do this. A probe is used to spin the lens into place. All right, let's do this. The thick fluid we added to the eye will need to be removed, and any remaining microscopic cataract fragments should be rinsed out as well. The incisions in the eye are generally self-sealing, very rarely that we need to add a suture to close the incision. In our patient's case, we don't need any sutures. The lens is now in place. Our patient will need someone to drive her home after cataract <laughs> no, surgery. Really? And no. she shouldn't drive until she's cleared at her follow-up appointment tomorrow. We'll prescribe medicated eye drops to use several times each day for a few oh, weeks that after one just, cataract ugh. surgery. And oh. she'll need to wear a protective eye shield while sleeping or napping for about a week after surgery. John, that's what I'm going to be a using. A special pair of post-op sunglasses will and also that. need to be worn to protect her eye from sunlight and other bright light as her eye recovers. Oh, God. You did a great job today, But surgeon. I'm not getting cataract surgery, but you're here, still would have to try uh, your hand at one of our other have surgeries the eye here at surgerysquad.com. Virtual C-section? I already did that one. Oh, the rest are really... I think we're good for now. I, I had fun, so I am going to <laughs> just leave it here. Uh, yeah, yeah. How, how long what did I stream for? About 45 minutes. It was worth it just to have some. Uh... So, all right. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. I'll see you guys later.